you were part of the most powerful society on earth. At the heart of this society was the army. Without the army, the empire was nothing. Had they left anything behind? Have any weapons been found on the wall? Remarkably few, because obviously soldiers were looking after their weapons, they were expected to. Um, but yes, we do have um, the odd piece, particularly of bows, composite bows. For example, we have a little tiny piece here, and this is the, the top of a bow, it's called an earlath. And this goes at the very end of the bow, takes the string through here. And this is a very important part of the bow because it not only strengthens the bow, but it also helps it to be efficient, helps it to be fast and accurate. And this presumably was a Roman invention? No, 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 um, archery, this sort of uh, use of a composite bow is something which came into the Roman Empire from the East. It's the Romans adapting and adopting other people's technology. Barbarian technology. What's special about this eastern bow is that the end is carved out of horn, so the string can be pulled back harder and further. With this innovation, they had transformed the simple bow and arrow into a weapon that won wars. So right at the heart of the imperial war machine lies evidence of the skill and ingenuity of the barbarians. But that's not the only reason why, in unravelling the mystery of the Dark Ages, this bow could be a valuable clue. For the Romans, this was simply an efficient piece of military technology, and that's the way it looks to us today. But it was much more than that for the barbarians from the East. To them, it was a cultural icon. And for me, as an anthropologist, it's a rare physical object that gives us an insight into the barbarian worldview. It's a way into the minds of our hidden ancestors. This is how the bow would have been fired. To acquire the skills of the nomadic warriors of the Dark Ages has taken Koshoi Loyosh many years. He's tried to understand their culture from the inside, but I still can't imagine what that feels like. If you do something your ancestors did, you can come closer, closer and closer. If I don't use the bow and don't sit on the horse, no contact. Two dozen years ago, the people say, shoot from the horse. I think it's a little bit closer. The warrior life depends on the horse. It was very close. These nomadic warriors were individualists and wedded to their horses. Man and horse together, even in death. First uh, dig a grave for the man, after dig a grave for the horse. And uh, put the saddle and every bridle, everything on the horse and uh, put the horse in the grave and shoot, shoot the horse. And uh, there are many bulls in the graveyard. Spending time with Loyash gives me glimpses of the barbarian mind. I can see what a very different universe these individualistic guerrilla warriors inhabited from the centralized and hierarchical world of the Roman legionary. Loyash's passion and commitment is one way into their world, but I need something more tangible. 
My journey through the Dark Ages starts in the very last days of Empire, the beginning of the 5th century. That was the time the Romans made this extraordinary map, stretching from Britannia in the west to China in the east. It's really a diagram of the world they knew. With all roads leading to Rome, it combines the simplicity of a tube map with the detail of a route planner. I'm taking it with me as a constant reminder of why we know more about the Romans than we do about the barbarians. No barbarian map survives. We don't even know if they ever made any. And this might have been the shape of our world today, except for a momentous event that happened in the dead of winter in the year 406. At the beginning of the fifth century, migrating Germanic tribes were on the move across the European plains towards the Roman world. And it was here, at the River Rhine, that they reached the edge of empire. For these migrating peoples, it was a barrier to be crossed, then forgotten. Like Hadrian's Wall, it was guarded by forts and defended by troops. But it was under far more pressure. The enemy was trying to get in. This was a frontier town. Behind me, Pax Romana, and in front of me, Germania. This is the place where the barbarians arrived. The Romans lumped together as barbarians, hundreds of different tribal groups under countless different chiefs in North and Eastern Europe. But where had they come from and why, with the Vandals at the fore, did they arrive here at Mainz? The Roman books don't say. But today, using modern technology, I'm going to take a bird's eye view of Europe to try to work it out. So in the Dark Ages, when people came from the East into Europe, which routes did they take? Migratory peoples coming from the Eurasian steppe had various routes of access into Europe. Uh, one is crossing at the, the mouth of the, of the Danube and into what was northern Greece, centrally through the Moravian Gap, and then further west, reaching...